hey, I'm making these today. If you want to see how I designed them, uh, cut them out, painted them, put them together, all that good stuff, stick around. And uh, oh, by the way, we are just in time for Easter. So if you are not making Easter stuff, maybe you should watch this. All right, I'm in Lightburn here and I'm creating a box, which is going to be the uh, material I'm going to be cutting out of. Um, set that material size to uh, what the blank size is that I cut up. Um, and I make sure that the output on this is off because uh, I don't want to forget about it and then end up cutting it in the future. Uh, but then I'm going to import a uh, file that I downloaded for free off of the internet. Uh, it's just this bunny file. I want to alter it though. Um, so this is going to be cut out in the future. I make sure the output is on. I delete the inside because it was a thick line. Um, and I'm going to create a circle and then duplicate that circle. And uh, it's kind of a two-step process in Lightburn that I've found to try and do, uh, do this, but I'm going to put the circle where I want the head underneath the ears and then subtract that circle from these two parts. Uh, kind of got to play around with the buttons. I, I know it shows what they do, but I always forget which one's uh, the right button. Found it there. Uh, ungroup these two because they are grouped. Uh, delete the bottom portion, and then I'm going to take the other circle that I created and put that right about where that other one was. Maybe I'm going to leave a little bit of a gap in between there uh, because I want to delete that inside gap. Uh, again, hitting the wrong button, uh, the undo, uh, Command-Z on Mac and Control-Z on PC uh, is a lifesaver here. But there we go, finally got the... Uh, the final design that I'm looking for here. Now I'm going to create some offsets. The first offset I'm creating is uh, going to be inside and this is going to be the piece that is going to be cut out with the name going across the middle. And I'm going to create a second offset. This one's outside and this outside piece is going to be the back piece. I want my total design height to be about five inches, so I'm gonna hit that lock so it's locked and that locks the aspect ratio of the image. Uh, now the entire thing is gonna be five inches tall and we need a hole for uh, the rope to go through to hang this on a basket or whatever. And again, with the locking thing, I want that a quarter inch hole. Uh, put it in its place and then group the hole and the back plate together. That way those are one piece and they won't be separated when you move them. So the next thing that I want to do is create the shiplap for this back plate or the back piece. Um, I'm going to create a rectangle, a pretty long rectangle here so that I can cover the whole entire bunny but I want to make it thin. Uh, and this is going to be engraved instead of cut out. So I mark this as red. And like I said, I want these really thin. Uh, and then I'm going to use the array function, uh, which is really powerful in Lightburn. I, I really like it. And utilizing this array function, I'm going to create multiple rows of uh, these lines. You can see here, if you go horizontally, uh, it'll go off to the side, but if you use the rows, it'll go up and then you can reverse dir the direction as well and that'll make it go down. Uh, but anyway, I figure out, uh, you know, the spacing and how many lines I want on this thing. I think I like uh, the way that this looks right here and gonna click OK. And with the initial shiplap design done, I'm going to uh, tighten up the cut so that I'm not just wasting a bunch of time uh, when it's actually engraving and cutting this.
Next step with that I do is cut or make boxes around each individual thing. So a box for the back and a box for the front. Um, get it tight into the, the cut. This will make sense a little bit later, but I take this entire cut piece out when I'm going to paint these. Uh, and I'll show that process here in, in the future, but just getting these to where they are right around the bunnies and uh, that way I can get more out of a, a single piece of uh, material. We'll group all of this together and then I'll show you uh, another cool function, or I, I guess it's the same function of the array uh, button on the left, but uh, separating these into two separate files uh, so that you can get a bunch of back blanks uh, out of a single piece or the bed size of your laser. Um, you know, you can create, on mine at least, it looks like five would fit. I don't know, uh, that back piece might not be the exact width, so I might be able to fit six in there, but you get the general idea. You can cut out all of your back pieces, um, get those painted, and then on a separate file, have your bunny uh, with the name on it, and you can create a bunch of those and cut those all out at once. Uh, just so you're doing uh, the two separate processes uh, in different files and at different times. You can do them at the same time, that's not a big deal, but just an option there. All right, and now the fun begins. We're going to put the name in the middle of this bunny. So click the text, uh, my name's Brian, so we'll make mine. And uh, select the font. The font that I've been using on these is uh, Sweet Shine and uh, you have to buy a license for it. Uh, I got mine off of uh, fontbundles.net. Uh, super cheap and you get a bunch of fonts. Um, so the goal here is to get as much real estate in the outside of the bunny uh, and still retain the way that the name looks. Uh, so it takes a little bit of tweaking around, but you can kind of get an idea of what I'm doing here. I'm just expanding and trying to center it and making it bigger, but just get enough of the name outside of that first inside line of the bunny. And you can see we've crossed over, so that's good. Um, and again, we want to subtract the outside of the name from the inside of the bunny so that it becomes one piece and hey look at that first try and I am realizing here that I just made a huge mistake uh, I did not leave a blank bunny so that in the future I can make other ones so I'm undoing and I'm gonna copy uh, the bunny and the outline here <laughs> and set those off to the side and that way in the future I can make more of these uh, just copy the, the deal and paste it and then put another name in there so here you can see what it's going to look like when it gets cut out and it's uh, looking good to me so I'm going to save the file uh, call it bunny burninator and uh that way you can reference it in the future and make all the bunnies that you want. Uh, I noticed that I did not show my actual settings for each, uh, the cut and the engrave. So my line settings are uh, 15 speed with 55 power and the engrave is uh, 300 speed with 17 power. And this is on a uh, 80 watt, so there you go.
Here I'm using some masking tape to keep all the pieces together while I pull it off the table. I'm absolutely loving this French cream from Rust-Oleum. It goes on really nice, dries really fast, and looks really good in my opinion. Pro tip for you here, use a old cookie cutter or a cookie sheet to collect parts that fall through your, uh, your bed there. You can see I lost one of the dots for my eyes. I used a couple of different colors, but these Krylon Fusion All-in-One uh, colors are just phenomenal. I like this bright green, and I also use this uh, like sea foam or sea glass. I really like it. They dry super fast. Hey, while those are drying, I'd like to take a second and really thank you for making it this far. I appreciate it. Um, if you like what you're seeing in this video, I'd also appreciate it if you either subscribe or like or comment. Maybe tell me what you'd like to see in a future video or uh, maybe I'm messing something up and you know an easier way. Uh, leave a comment below and we'll try and, uh, we'll try and hash it out. Also, most or some of the tools that I have and some of the supplies that I use, I have a uh, link in the description uh, for an Amazon store that I run. Uh, I gotta tell you that I get a kickback if you buy something from it, but there's no obligation. I just wanted to make sure that uh, we were on the same page. So, uh, Also, the files for this I'm gonna make available. So if you don't want to go through the process of designing or any of that stuff and you just want to buy this file, I will make that available uh, for purchase and I'll leave a link in the description for that as well. Uh, super cheap, maybe two or three bucks. So. Uh, anyway, thank you very much and let's get back to this. All right, the remainder of this process is super simple. You take them apart after they've dried. Uh, and what I use to attach them together is this DAP Rapid Fuse Super Glue. It, it bonds super quick, it says 30 seconds, uh, so you have a little bit of play time, but really it's, it's a really quick process. Just get it all over the back, all over the name so that that doesn't come off and uh, attach everything together. Last step is to apply some clear coat. Uh, I use this fast dry Minwax Poly and uh, you're good to go.